Nothing stays hidden from me. Nothing. Let's do this. Hello and welcome to a guide on how to master Cypher. Since the Valorant closed beta release, Cypher has been a very solid pick in solo queue because you're the eye of the team and can provide a lot of information. And you do not need to be the best fragger as your information alone is very important. Also, in bigger competitive matches like Twitch Rivals, he's being picked as people can and will communicate about every single step the enemy makes. Cypher's gameplay is highly oriented on map control and vision for the team. So if you're the person who'd like to pop off by carrying your teammates, this character might not be the best choice for you. Also, I'd like to add that this character shouldn't be played unless you have general knowledge about every map, as this character is even better specifically when you know good places to place your equipment on. We'll talk about this later again, so don't worry. Before we get into the video, I'll shortly explain what I'm going to talk about. Firstly, we have the abilities. I'll try to quickly explain them and then we'll move on to the abilities more in depth, where I'll show you things like when and where to use those. After gaining this information, we can move on to the ability combos, which can be very practical at some situations. Then we'll have an example scenario, which happens very often when playing Cypher. I'll be shortly explaining on how to maintain such situations. You'll also want to know how to perform well with him in-game. So I'll first show you the defender side, which is definitely easier, and then I'll show you what you have to do when you are on the attacker side. Lastly, we have two short points, which conclude the video, a weapon and agent synergies. I'll leave the time marks in the description if you want to skip specific points of the video, but I highly recommend to watch everything to obtain all the micro and macro knowledge. Let's move on to the abilities. Cypher's abilities consist of a trap fire, which is by default his C ability. Wow, this is a nice spot. A cyber cage, which is his Q ability. Cage triggered. Cage triggered. Cage triggered. And to spy cam, which is his E ability. <laughs> Lastly, we have the ultimate neural theft, which is binded on the X key. Now that we know all of his abilities, we can go into more detail how everything works. The trap wire is the most important aspect for your defense on either side. The trap wire creates a line in between two walls which triggers when an enemy player crosses the trap wire. The enemy has a chance to destroy the trap wire after he walks through it or when he knows its position. But the upside for using the trap wire is that it prevents the enemies from rushing as they will reveal themselves in a vulnerable position if they walk into it, thus becoming an easy kill. When they destroy it, you'll get a notification that somebody destroyed your trap wire, which helps you gather information about the enemy positions. The good thing about this ability is that you can pick it up and redeploy it in another position. Which means if the enemies rotate somewhere or you yourself rotate somewhere else, you can take those with you and redeploy them on your new position. The important thing to note though is that the enemy can crouch under it or jump over it. So positioning them is very important. You usually want to put it in a height where your head is barely hitting it. You also need to be careful of obstacles like boxes because other players can jump over your wire from those boxes, leaving you unnoticed and in danger. When other players approach your wire, they will hear it and see it. So you also need to think of the position of the wires. 
I usually put them towards the middle because if you put it too near to a corner, basically to the front or to the back, enemies either see it or get caught and turn around the corner, leaving you no openings to shoot them while vulnerable. The next ability we're going to have a look at is the cyber cage. This cage is pretty strong as it provides you defense because the shots from the enemies deal less damage when passing through it. It can save your life if you react fast enough to deploy one to be able to run away as it slows the enemies as well. You can use this ability to smoke down paths to make sure that the enemy can't peek you. It also works very, very well for combos with your abilities, but we'll talk about that one in the combo section. One of the most important aspects is also that you can mind game the enemy with this ability. You can place it down for instance on A side on any map, run away, push B with your team and cause confusion to the enemies on the A side by activating your cage from B side as it's activatable from everywhere on demand. You can also use your camera to activate this ability so you could monitor A and activate it and create some confusion there. The spy cam is a camera which can be deployed on almost any wall, except for uneven walls and walls created by your teammates. For instance, Sage's wall. There are two ways to use the camera. You can use it offensively or defensively. In a defense stance, your goal is to put it in a place where your enemies can't find it immediately to get the most out of observing the area and gathering most information. If you want to play more aggressively, for instance when you're an attacker or just want to peek someone, you can rush to deploy the camera and use the mark ability of the camera. If you mark an enemy, they are shown to you every second until they remove the marker. This is where they are most vulnerable, but it's a very short time window. After deploying a camera and you want to change its position, you can take the camera back. The downside of this is that you'll get a 15 second cooldown timer. If an enemy destroys the camera though, it will be a 30 seconds cooldown timer. So if your camera was detected and you are nearby, you should always try to grab it faster than your enemy can destroy it. If the enemies destroy it, you are vulnerable for 30 seconds and this can be very crucial. So when you are defending, avoid getting your camera get destroyed and when you're attacking or playing more aggressive, it is alright to get your camera destroyed as you want to push the enemy anyways. All that is left is the ultimate, Neural Theft, which is basically downloading the positions of the enemies and showing them to you. It is only one picture, so you won't see them forever but it can be a deciding factor to win the game as it can turn around things easily because you force the enemy to reposition. You can rotate as you know how many people are where, you can rush a place, it just depends on the situation. Your ultimate is sadly only activatable for 20 seconds after killing an enemy and after 20 seconds you can't, you can't use the enemy corpse to gain information of the enemy's positions. So the ultimate can be weak if you're holding a side and want to check where the enemies are. If you're also bad in fragging, this can be a huge issue. The big question is also when to use your ultimate ability. Because wasting it too early won't be helpful. The best timing probably is when you're on a pinch. For instance when you can't push a side with your team so that you can change your decision. Or when the person is solo on, on the side, the one who is holding the side. If he's solo, you can all rush in with smokes. You could also use it when you're being sandwiched by multiple players to decide which one you should face first. Using it when you are alone can be beneficial, but I'd keep it to a maximum of a 1v3. Because going higher than that can be very hard, but you can of course still clutch it. Cypher can combo some abilities into others. Those are mostly done with the cyber cage though. One great combo is Cypher placing down a cyber cage, then putting a, a trapwire after it to hide that he hid the trapwire there. 
This will help you as the enemies blindly walk into smokes sometimes. Or in this case your cage. The cyber cage is very loud so you won't hear the trap as well, further strengthening this combo. The next combo is also very basic. A cage into camera, as putting the camera into the cage will do no, no sound. And even if, the enemies won't know where it is. You can wait until your cage is finished and then quickly spy over if your enemies are there. One more combo which isn't needed all that often but sometimes very helpful. Putting down two cages, triggering first cage by hand, placing a camera in it and then just when the first cage finishes triggering the second cage. This will allow you to buy a lot of time in case of a rush or in a pinch. We'll have an example scenario which can happen quite often. In this scenario you are left with a 3v4 but have the spike as defenders. You have the last seen position of every player in this case but let's assume you only know one or two of those missing in action people and don't know where they might approach from. Now the best course you could take assuming you have all abilities except for your ultimate is to try to cover everything to lower the chance to get flanked from somewhere. You have someone covering elbow and someone on B spot and you are in the back. You know that two people at least were on A side. This lets you assume that one of them might rotate to A portal to go B short. The other person might come from defenders so you have to cover that as well. Then we have one person on A lobby who killed a teammate so that person might come from B long. What we can do with this information right now is trapping the entrance to B from CT spawn and perhaps trapping B short in the order I just said as doing it quickly will greatly increase the odds of you surviving. The only uncovered entry would be B long. You could place a camera there and basically cover one side with him solo with Cypher without any help of your teammates. Then you could hide in elbow, cubby or on spot and use the camera for vision until enemies approach and do your move from there on. Now we can get into in-game. Firstly about defending. Cypher can defend sites easily if the first buy is made correctly. On the defending side you cannot buy any weapon which costs more than 400 because you need to buy two trap wires as I think this is the best way to hold a side alone. What you want to do is communicate with your team and tell them to hold another side or stay in between two sides to rotate faster if rotation is needed. What you want to do is cover all possible entrances with your camera which is free and your true trap wires which I told you to buy. This way your team can apply more pressure on the other sides while you can safely hold one side on your own. This doesn't mean that you can't ask your team for help. When you see even one person walk into your wire, ask for at least one person to rotate over as others might follow up and you do not have cyber cages to slow them down. You do this almost every round until the spike is planted. After the spike plant or even if you are forced to rotate and you can confirm that the enemies are there, take your equipment with you, maybe let one wire or the camera on the old spot and then move to the new place. When moving always cover your back with your trap wires as you can get flanked from the back very often. For attacker the situation changes a little bit. I'll be only talking about first buy as for the rest you mostly have enough money. First buy you should split to one cage and one trap wire as you might need the cage to push and the wire to secure your back. You'll need 300 money to buy those and will be left with 500. I usually stick 
with the light shield, but taking the ghost isn't a bad choice either. So that one is up to you. Before pushing with your team or splitting with your team, you usually have to somehow secure your back. So my recommendation is to put it on a position where it is likely that an enemy might walk over as it is crucial information for you and can save your life. If we, for instance, assume your team rushed, you can easily spam the trapwire keybind, place it while running after your team, follow your team up with a cage and deploy it to help them secure a spot. There is a lot of ways to secure spots as well, but I think that's just general knowledge, so you should get better in that with time. So for pre-planned, we cover our back and then we smoke where we want to go if needed. What you want to do post-plant though is take your wire back if it wasn't stepped on and use this wire to cover important spots. You can use your camera offensively to check if enemies are there, but on a defensive stance it is mostly more secure as you never have to grab it back and can use it more. All that's left is positioning safely if possible and peeking into your camera every few seconds. This will give you a big advantage when holding spots. Also, if you detect anyone with your camera, you should ping it as soon as possible, as spreading the information can not only save your teammates, but you yourself as well, because without a team, you'll most likely lose. For the last two sections, synergies, I'll quickly go through these as the current agent count isn't that much. Uh, firstly, we'll start off with weapon synergies. Your character has many slows and smokes, which you can definitely use as an advantage to land easy hits. This works the best with an operator to one-shot them when they're slowed, and even the marshal to land two consecutive shots on the enemy as they'll barely have mobility when they're slowed from your wire. A very good choice is also SMGs, as you can spray them down from middle distance. I won't mention the Vandal or Phantom, as they're more like skill based in my opinion, so you can always have a good synergy with those, because if you can use them well, you're just gonna perform well generally. Lastly, we have the Agent synergies. This one's a little bit more interesting, because you can do very weird or funny combos. For instance, you have Cypher into Omen. Uh, Cypher into Omen is a very nice combo, as you can ulti to show Omen all positions of the enemies, and Omen can globally ult behind the best possible position to finish off the most enemies. Then there is also Cypher into Viper. Uh, Cypher into Viper is also very strong, as you can navigate in her ultimate ability with your camera and don't need to DK your HP for no reason. What you don't want in your team or who you want to avoid is mostly Rays because as she has many explosives and can accidentally destroy your cameras and trap wires, you just don't want her in your team. This goes also for enemy raises. She is a counter to you and she can be very annoying to you as you most use equipment which needs to be placed down. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully it will help you improve your skills on Cypher. Take your time and practice the abilities. See where the best placements could be and train your combos and your map awareness to improve in game. The better your map awareness gets, the better you'll be with Cypher and carry your team to the victory. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave nothing.